to see a marching band. Well, the Young Turks, we got a great show today for you. Jake Uger and Ben Manquitz, we got more interviews than you know what to do with. And right off the top, <laughs> Senator Russ Feingold of the great state of Wisconsin. <laughs> Senator Feingold, welcome to the Young Turks. How are you? I'm, I'm good, except for the telecom immunity. How are well, you? <laughs> pretty much that and the rest of the bill, which stinks, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, too. All right, so let's talk about this new FISA bill that's coming up. Some are calling it a compromise. You're calling it a capitulation. Um, why do you think it's a capitulation, and what is so fundamentally wrong about this telecom immunity? Well, the idea that this is somehow a compromise where we got a few things and they got a few things is just false. Senator Kit Bond, who's one of our worst opponents on this, is, is basically doing a jig. He's so happy, bragging, that the White House is shocked at how it got everything it wanted, basically. Um, there's two huge problems. One is the one you mentioned, this retroactive immunity for telephone companies, whether or not they followed the law in giving up this private information to the government. That is a terrible precedent in terms of the rule of law and one that's generated a lot of attention. We've got like a 1,000 calls in the last couple of days in my office against this deal. The other piece that I think is even more important that you hear less about is the way in which this is going to allow the government to basically suck up all international communications between Americans and anybody overseas, even Americans overseas, in a giant data bank if they want. And this is an amazing intrusion into the freedom of the American people. There are no, there's no court review of it. There's no requirement showing that anybody's done anything wrong. So these two things together make for just an awful piece of legislation that nobody should be voting for, especially a Democrat. Okay, uh, two things, Senator Feingold. One, what private information, when you say uh, suck up all this private information, what private information well, are we talking about? Anytime you email anybody overseas or receive an email, anytime you text message anybody, anytime you make a phone call, and you, you name it, <laughs> just the normal that kind of transactions between parent and child, the... Uh, Parent and a soldier, uh, business associates, I relatives. Like, I like couching things in terms of what people in general may not understand when it's really I who doesn't understand. Um, so I think people might be confused. <laughs> uh, when you say there's no uh, court review and it's all put into a data bank, what does it really mean, put into a data bank? Is the actual email put into a data bank? Is, the, uh, is a recording of the call put into a data bank? Well, I can't go into too call? much detail. That all, all I can say is that it's a vast power that has no limits, as far as I can tell. Uh, and there's no regulation uh, of it. It, it, we're not just talking here about uh, the fact that somebody made a call. We're talking here about content as well. Okay, that's the important part. The content is actually in there. Not just that you made an overseas call, but that's uh, what you said in that That's call. right. No, okay. it's, not just, it's not just tracing the number of calls. It's content. All right. Now, Senator Feingold, uh, on the retroactive immunity, uh, it appears to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, you guys don't know what you're giving immunity for. So uh, Some of us do, but that's only about 30 of us. <laughs> Seventy senators don't know because they haven't been uh, had the opportunity to be read in, as they say, to the illegal wireless wiretapping program. I, wiretapping program. I have. I'm on the Intelligence Committee and uh, also on Judiciary Committee. And, uh, but most senators don't even know exactly what it is. So uh, that's my question. I mean, do you guys, you're on the Intelligence Committee, uh, so do you guys know if, who they wiretapped? Because if you don't know who they wiretapped, isn't it possible that they wiretapped you, for example? Well, I can't say I've seen a list, but I know the, basically how they go about doing it, and I know what's potentially subject to being obtained. And, uh, I mean, it's perfectly possible, but I can't say for sure. Huh, that's interesting. All right, so, uh, everybody, so let's get, get to the specifics of what's going to happen in the, senator, in the Senate, Senator Feingold which is uh, you have uh, promised to do a filibuster of this bill. How is the logistics of that going to work out? Uh, uh, does that come up first? And do you, have, do you think you're going to be able to muster up 40 senators on your side to be able to do it, 41 senators? Um, can you tell us the latest sure. on that? Well, I'm not optimistic that we're going to have uh, 41 people stand tall on this because I'm very concerned about how a number of Democrats are approaching this. But, you know, we've already started the process of what people normally call a filibuster. I mean, normally bills are just allowed to come up. We said, no, we're going to make you wait two days, and you have to actually win a motion to proceed to the bill, 60 votes, which happens today. So they first have to do that. 
then we're going to talk about the bill for a while. A number of people wanted us to just allow it to go through with a couple of hours of debate. We said no. Senator Dodd and I both have spoken at length on it, and we want to talk some more. There are also a number of people that want to offer amendments, and they tried to say, no, let's block that. We said no to that. We also They also asked if we could uh, just let the bill have a final vote, uh, and we said, uh, no, we're gonna have, you're going to have a cloture petition. You're going to have to get 60 votes to have the, have the final vote and cut off amendments. So we're going to demand that as well. So basically what we're talking about is making sure they don't just jam it through today or first thing tomorrow, but require that there will be a few days. The truth is they would be able to stop this filibuster with 60 votes by the end of the week uh, in any event, but we believe this is important enough to make them go through that process. So yes, that uh, is the nature of the filibuster here. So l I want to be uh, clear on this because it's very important. So there are two 60-vote barriers they have to get through. One is the right. motion to proceed today. And then at a later time this week, there is going to be another 60-vote barrier they need to get. To, to cut off amendments and cut off debate and then you know, be able to move into the final period where the final vote would be taken. That's so right. in, in that second vote, if there is going to be a prolonged filibuster type of activity, that's where we would have it. Well, post-closure, post-motion to proceed closure, there's a certain amount of time before you actually go to closure. And you see, at that point, if they get closure, then there's a time limit. There is no, if they get cloture, that takes away your ability to have unlimited debate. That's the whole purpose of cloture. So if they get 60 votes, that means they've stopped the filibuster. So, Senator, how close do you think uh, you are? How many senators do you think are going to Not close them? enough, I'm sorry to report. Not uh, close if there enough. were, uh, what I was getting at there, what I was about to ask is, if there were a uh, movement in, in the leadership of the Senate to do this, could it be done, or is it just Well, so, is I think that would help. It yeah. would have helped if the Speaker had not come down in favor of this thing. The Majority Leader has said that, of the Senate said he's going to vote against the bill. So that helps, but, you know, there's still a whole bunch of people that uh, people that might be a little surprising who have been with us well, all the way who are saying, well, now it's time to do this because it's uh, a compromise. It's uh, at least an improvement. That's not true. Who would it's absolute window dressing. Who would surprise us? Let's see. I'm not going to get into that. They, I'm, oh, well. I'm hoping they'll do the right thing, but I have my fears. I, I want to ask a specific question about the majority leader. He says he's going to vote against the bill. That's easy enough. But the qu real question is, is how is he going to vote on cloture? And do you know the answer to I that? I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Because isn't that really a political cover to say, oh, what can we do? We put up the bill, and uh, I voted against it, but I lost. I would say really opposing this legislation involves voting against motion to proceed, voting against cloture, and voting against the bill. Anything less is, is helping the bill pass. All right. Well, Senator Feingold, without naming names, I understand you don't want to single out uh, any of your colleagues. Uh, what is the overall reasoning, do you think? What is going on with some of these Democrats who might surprise us? Well, I mean, they're not stupid. All, well, not all of them, anyway. Uh, it, why are they buying into a notion of a compromise when there really is no giving on the other side? It's the latest chapter in running for cover when the administration tries to intimidate Democrats on national security issues. It's the most uh, embarrassing failure of the Democrats I've seen since uh, 2006, other than the failure to vote to end the Iraq War. These are the two real sad aspects of uh, an otherwise pretty good record. Um, it's, it's letting George Bush and George, Dick Cheney have their way, even though they're that unpopular and on their way out. It's really incredible. It, it is incredible. So, I mean, it leads to the question that everybody's been asking, you know, whether it's our uh, viewers, uh, the readers of the blogs, etc., and the actual bloggers, everybody uh, that's paying attention is asking, why are the Democrats doing it? Is it, you know, I got three possibilities. One is Craven. They think, hey, if we give in to Bush, we're going to win more elections. And we don't really care about the policy in the Fourth Amendment and the Constitution are an interesting side note, but I want to win more elections. Number two is they're scared of their own shadow, and they didn't get the memo that uh, the Republicans are grossly unpopular throughout the country, and that President Bush is the most unpopular president in the history of the United States. But if they didn't get that memo, you've got to question a couple of different things about their judgment. The third theory out there is that they're complicit, that people like uh, Rockefeller signed off on some of these abuses, and they get money from the lobbyists, so they don't really want to rock the boat. Well, my honest belief is it's the first two. I don't really see it as having to do with political contributions. I don't really see it that they really want to cooperate with this stuff. I see it more as the first two things you said, having to do with political fear and, uh, you know, calculations about elections, to be, to be honest with you. There are many areas that I think are grossly affected by money. I think it is less true of this, and it has more to do with political fear. Let me ask you uh, this, Senator. I know you don't have much time left. Do you, in making what I uh, take it to be an impassioned plea to your colleagues, do they get that 
as long as they continue to do this, we're always going to have to do this. I mean, at what point do we stop saying, oh, the Republicans are stronger on national security, let's do what they say, then that's going to go on for 80 years. At some point, we have to sort of change the nature of the conversation so that people think, hey, you know what, those Democrats, they can also be strong well, on Well, in their security. defense, and I'm not super inclined to be in their defense today, I would say what they would tell you is we're going to have a new president, he's going to be a Democrat, he's somebody who's sensitive to these issues, and we won't have all this crap coming at us from the administration. That, I think, is what they're thinking. And, you know, it's not irrational. I think it's wrong. I think it's much harder to change something like this once it's in place. We should hold it up, uh, have a sunset for a few months, and let President Obama do the right thing on it. Um, but I think that might be what they'd tell you. Senator Feingold, finally, uh, how do we make this change happen? Because right now, uh, Democrats are in this, I don't know if you want to call it a prisoner's mentality, I don't, Washington bubble that they are so deathly afraid that the Republicans are right about everything. Uh, and it seems to be in mass. Obviously, Senator Dodd, yourself, Senator Kerry have led on some issues. Senator Clinton and Senator Obama claim to be leaders. I haven't seen them lead on anything uh, in a fight against Bush. Uh, but how do we change that mentality? And do you have hope that we're going to be able to change it in, in the short term or the midterm? Well, I'm hoping that we have a very good election result in the House and the Senate and elect President Obama. And then I think the excuses will all be over. I think that people will realize either we're going to be Democrats or we're not. So I am hopeful that people will no longer be intimidated. But I worry a great deal because I thought that was the message of the 2006 election and the performance when it comes to the areas of Iraq and civil liberties and the Constitution have not been good. And uh, I, I really do regret it. Senator Russ Feingold, uh, to be quite honest, the one guy we actually trust in the Senate. Well, you're very kind, and I enjoyed being on the show. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much bye for bye. being on the Young Turks. We're going to come right back, Young Turks. Stand up for your right. Get up, 